Center. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Don't go away. Page Brake, Salt Lake City, Brittle, and St. George are brake and alignment specialists with complete parts and service for all vehicles from person movers to earth movers. Page Brake keeps trucks and trailers rolling safely with complete brake service. Page Brake keeps commuters commuting safely with properly maintained brake systems. Tourist touring, recreation rides operating with safe braking systems. Page Brake, complete brake service in Salt Lake City, Vernal, and St. George. Call Page Brake to cure your brake problem, large or small. We service them all. by Lane, built to fit any room comfortably without spending a lot of dosy -si dough. -si -do. It's on sale now at Granite Furniture, Utah's largest action lane dealer. For those who purchased something other than a Sega Genesis. Yeah, that's it. Our sincere condolences. What a waste. When you start with the Genesis, you can always add a Sega CD. And new Genesis 32X. Everything else is cold and stiff. Barrier or cremation? Burn it. Welcome to the next level. There must be something in this. This is not just like blown up corn. It doesn't look like it was stamped out. It looks natural. They're not flakes. They're just little, small, crunchy things. Great nut cereal. What's in it for you? When it hits your mouth, you're so surprised. It's a good wake-up, start-the-day kind of taste. It's not one that, that goes soggy in your mouth. They stay crunchy forever. It makes my body happy, and it makes my mouth happy. Great nuts. There's lots in it for you. I think crunchy's great for you. What do you want, soggy, flabby? I mean... We're back live in Logan, Utah, as we are awaiting the kickoff. They uh, did have the traditional coin toss, and Craig, why don't you give us those results? <laughs> well, actually, what happened was the USL, Ragin' Cajuns, and we're calling that a lot tonight, USL, uh, won the toss and elected to receive. They will defend the goal to the north, to our left. The Aggies will kick off, and we'll see uh, Jake DeLome right away, their sophomore quarterback, who became their starter in the first game of last year, which was against Utah State, after they tried three other quarterbacks and settled on him. Which brings us to our historical perspective that you saw on the bottom of your, of your screen. The series between these two schools goes back about 12 months. The Aggies won at uh, Southwestern Louisiana Stadium last year, a 34-13 route that was the uh, first game of the uh, of the season for the Aggies we mentioned also it really changed the Ragin' Cajun offense for the rest of the season in a very positive way and that uh, they got to see how talented Jake DeLome was he was able to guide them to a share of the Big West title last year just about set for the kickoff there's Mike and Nor. he will do the kicking and back deep for the Ragin' Cajuns number 45 is uh, Brian Jackson Number 43 is Robert Jewell, and he's the dangerous one. Loses it in the end zone, and he will wisely put the knee down for the touchback. So the Ragin' Cajun offense steps onto the field for the first time. And first and ten. What they're going to try to do, Carlton, is run the ball. If they could run the ball effectively all night, that's what they'd be uh, looking to do, and they'd be happy about it. There's their starting offense with DeLome. Cotton and Mossick are the running backs, but you also might see number 34, Marcus Pryor, who Dick Bumpus, the coordinator, told me is their best running back. There's their starting offense front. That's a big left side of the front, a couple of 300-pounders up there. Hefty offensive line. First and 10, balls of the 20. That's Cotton in the backfield. And Cotton takes the ball up the middle. Met after a gain of about three. That's David Gill. And uh, Danilo Robinson really knifed down the line of scrimmage, number 97, one of the outside down linemen, and really made a nice play on that. There's uh, the Aggie offense or defensive front with Robinson balls, Hawk and Williams, and then the inside linebackers. Gary Brown playing a lot more now that Willie Jackson is uh, not available with the injury. Did the same thing last year when Willie went down with an injury. And there's the Aggie defensive backfield, uh, led by Donald Tuma. Second down, seven yards to go. That's the tight end, Romero, in motion. In the backfield, Mossick, he takes the pitch around the right side, finds about two yards of room before he's met by Spencer Wagner. Nice open field trip up there. 
Brings up a third and four situation for the Ragin' Cajuns. Well, Dick Bump has told me if, if southwestern Louisiana was able to get into a lot of second and threes and second and fours, it could be a long day for the Aggies. Obviously, the first run was a three-yarder making second and seven. That's, if the Aggies did that every time tonight against the running game, they would mark it a success because eventually they'd force the loam to throw, and he's not very he's not as good at, at that as running the ball when they're effective running. Cotton back in the backfield again. DeLome rolls out and overthrows the intended receiver, Steve Mossick. Brings up a fourth down situation, so the Aggie defense has held tough here, a three and out situation. Brings up a punting situation, and we will get to see Kevin Alexander returning the punt for Utah State. He averages uh, just over 10 yards of return for the Aggies. Mike Jones, the punter, for southwestern Louisiana. You see his numbers there. Nearly blocked. Alexander will take it on the bounce at about the 27-yard line and be forced out of a bound at the 30. Turns out to, to be a, not a good-looking front, but probably about a 48-yarder, so it's effective for them. Always makes the return man hesitate when it hits the ball, or the ball hits the ground because of the oblong shape of the football. You never know where it's going to bounce. And you sure hate to fumble those, and Utah State has done those in each of the last four games, I believe. They have fumbled a punt and has set up a scoring drive. Now, the Aggie offense against this extremely aggressive USL defensive team, they are more aggressive than Utah State as they will bring on most plays seven or eight people. They'll usually be in man-to-man -man coverage with three back, and number 42, we talked about him. Uh, there's the starting offensive lineup, by the way, for the Aggies along the front. The 42, Orlando Thomas, has freedom to do basically anything he wants. They will never hook him up, however, with a wide receiver. He may cover a back out of the backfield sometime, but he should be making a lot of plays today. He blitzes a lot, and as we also mentioned, as we look at Wells' totals, the Aggie uh, backs, when they stay in the block, have been instructed to watch for number 42 and keep him away from Matt Wells. Seem to have a delay down on the field. I hope it's not that game clock again. Looks like we've got it straightened out. Okay. First and ten. Balls on the 29-yard line. Cofell Greer, the lone setback. And the receivers are Ivy Russell, Sean Turner, and Kevin Alexander all along the right side. Wells fakes to Greer. Tosses over to Kevin Corner, the tight end, for a gain of about eight yards. Kevin Corner got the start today. Has the starting tight end. Brings up a second down and about a long two. We took the power. A little bit of misdirection there. The fake handoff and the play action. There's the uh, USL starting defense. And uh, Goff actually I don't think is starting today. That was a late change. And then you see 42 Thomas, the best of a veteran defensive secondary. Second down, short yardage situation. Flip back to Greer. Pushes his way across the first down marker. Gets to the 40-yard line. Patrice Alexander, we will say his name quite a bit tonight. He is the middle linebacker for southwestern Louisiana. A 256-pounder, and so he, he's a bruiser. When you match him up with Profil Greer, as you see his numbers, uh, sometimes the play has a tendency to die right there. Brandon Dyson and also Sean Griswold were out in front doing a nice job of blocking. They created extra yards, pushing a couple of people right out of bounds at the sideline. There's Charlie Weatherby. 14 and 15 in his third year here, and 10 and 4 in conference games. And 4 and 3 in conference games in Logan. Boy, we have more stats than we need. We won't get to the record under the lights. Sean Turner complete the gain of about two yards. Tim Sensley on the stop for the Ragin' Cajuns. Sensley, a junior out of Ethel, Louisiana. Well, you brought it up. The Aggies have played four games <laughs> under the new lights. They've been four exciting games. There's Sean Turner, uh, what, second on the team in receptions. But four games under the new lights, and they've lost all four. Close, interesting games, but they've yet to pull one out under these new lights. Second down, eight yards to go. Ball's on the 42-yard line. All the receivers are lined up to the left. Wells fakes to Greer. Rolls out. Throws across his body. Tip and incomplete. Tim Sensley uh, was the one who got a hand on it and knocked it away. 
Interesting how the Aggies are going to this play action because of these uh, overly aggressive rushers. Here comes Wells after faking the handoff and again throw, have to throw across his body a little bit off the mark and then it was tipped away by a, a defender uh, from USL. Third down play, third and eight. Southwest Louisiana second in the conference in third down conversions from the defensive standpoint of held opponents to 27 percent for a success ratio. Second to the Aggies, by the way. Well, he's back, fires to Sean Turner, gets him the blocking from the official. Turner gets across the 50 into the 44-yard line in raging Cajun territory. Orlando Thomas finally makes the tackle, but Sean Turner with a nifty piece of running and some nifty open field blocking. Yeah, uh, a great sort of a delay pattern as Wells drops. He's looking to his right all the way, holding off on that wing and then cutting across the middle and making the catch, and this guy is fast. He's on the track team, and he knows how to run, and he proved it with that one. Nice first down play by the Aggies. Again, keeping the, uh, there's Turner, keeping this USL defense off balance. Three for four now passing for 24 yards for Wells. First and ten, balls in the southwestern Louisiana territory at the 44-yard line. Quick toss out to Dwayne Williams. Plunges ahead for a gain of about five. Tim Sensley again on the, on the stop for the Cajuns. Jim Zorn told us that they had a very good audible package, they felt, ready for this uh, blitzing USL team. And I don't know if that was changed at the line of scrimmage or not, but it seemed like an automatic. He was uncovered, Williams was, and I think that's the signal to, to Wells, like uh, Anthony Calvillo last year, to just get the ball out there quick and make some yards. Second down and five. Clock is 11.03 and counting here in this first period. No score yet. Popo Greer in motion. Cajun show blitz and do so. Quick toss out to Ivy Russell who squeezes ahead just beyond the first down marker at about the 33-yard line. Looked like he got beyond the first down marker by about half a yard before he was brought down by Fernando Thomas. The uh, USL blitzing defense, the Aggies filled the gaps. Everybody, see number 40 there on the left of your screen, couldn't get through quick enough, and it bought Wells just enough time to get the pass out, and it looks like it is a first down. Uh, out there on the flat, but the, the blocking picked up a couple of blitzing linemen or uh, the secondary people just enough to get Wells free of uh, trouble. Johnson and Alexander on the right side. Wells directing Greer. And Sean Turner is way down on the left side. Wells fires, aiming for Turner, the timing route. And that's going to be a flag, yes. No question about it. It was uh, Fernando Thomas who was out there with Turner, and he knew he was in trouble. The pass was not uh, real well thrown, but it really didn't matter because by then there's Wells dropping back, throwing right at our camera, and I don't know if we'll get to see the bumping and grinding going on, but it was a, it was interference all the way. Actually, wasn't that poorly a thrown a ball. It was just the Turner was shoved out of bounds and couldn't get to it. Fernando Thomas with coverage. He's got 4-5 speed. He's known as a hard hitter. Senior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Unable to get turned around and find the ball on that play. It's an automatic first down for the Aggies. Takes them down to the 17-yard line. We'll see. Hopefully they won't be too busy tonight. I was just down talking with them, and somebody made the decision that they should all wear short sleeves. <laughs> And not all of them were thrilled with that decision. Aggies with five first downs now already in this game. Wells rolls out, finds the tight end, Kevin Corner again. At about the 12 yard line, a pickup of five. John Harris with a tackle for the Cajuns. And Joe Bailey on the left end was blitzing hard on Wells and still Matt got it off and kept his composure. Watch this. He Fakes the handoff, now he rolls. Didn't, didn't fool Bailey, who's right there, but Wells threw it over him, and a pinpoint pass. Nice nice pass under pressure. It seems the Aggies have made the adjustments they need and have really put together a nice drive. Second down, five yards to go. Ball's on the 13-yard line. That's Johnson in motion. Pitch back to Greer. Greer will get the first down. A little bit more. Touchdown, Utah State. Greer found the room around the right side and used that breakaway speed that we talked about early on. And Profel Greer finds the end zone for the first time in this season. He Isn't was in the amazing? end zone ten times last year, and here at game number seven, he finds the end zone for the first time. 
There was some question whether or not he would even start. Uh, Jim Zorn told me earlier today they were still trying to decide whether it would be Abu Wilson or Profail Greer. Good decision. Yeah. Greer has a, his average is just over two yards a carry this year, which is down sharply from last year. We saw some contact on the extra point attempt. But it's good. The Aggies jump up. Drawing first blood. Seven to nothing now is the score in the first period. Nine minutes, 37 seconds left. And we will take a break as we leave you with a replay of Profile Greer's touchdown. Back in a moment right after this. If you're the kind of person who enjoys distinction, excellence, and quality, look no further than Larry H. Miller Cadillac. You see, at Larry H. Miller Cadillac, we specialize in adding custom details and accessories to make your luxury automobile even more distinctive. Owning a Cadillac sets you apart, but owning a fully accessorized Cadillac from Larry H. Miller puts you in a class by yourself. Stop in for your own Larry H. Miller Limited Edition Cadillac. Hello, Mr. Forbefore. Yeah, can I speak to Mr. Forbefore, please? Well, sir, Mr. Forbefore is a place, not a person. Uh, yeah, what does he do then? Mr. Forbefore carries quality truck and auto accessories. We have hitches from $79.95, overloads for just $129.95, and bed liners $179.95. Yeah, those are great prices, but I could uh, uh, speak to Mr. Forbefore now, please. Sir, again, Mr. Forbefore is not a person. Mr. Forbefore is Utah's number one source for quality truck and auto accessories. Now, fine, be that way. Now, let me speak to Mrs. Forbefore. <sighs> Okay, let's take a look at the replay of the touchdown as Wells turns and makes the quick pitch to Profail Greer, sweeping to the right. Now, Greer's the key on the play right here is the outside receiver, Sean Johnson. Frees it for just a second, and we see Johnson coming across. My telestrator's malfunctioning on me, but he's going to throw the block right there and hold that man up long enough for Greer to get to the outside and down the sideline for 13 yards and a score, and the Aggies... What, three or four, five minutes into the game of taking the lead? A beautifully executed drive, Carlton. Brian Jackson back deep again to receive the kick. He takes it. Oh, steps in front is Jewel, and Jewel has speed up the middle. All the way to the 39-yard line. He just exploded, and there is a flag down. Funny thing was, at the end of the run, Todd Townsend almost stripped the ball out of his hand. But what we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Jules the dangerous one, and he proves that right away. Here he takes it as they're trying to decide which one to, to catch the ball out across the 15 and the 20. And he's on his way. Let's see if we can see Townsend come in here and almost strip it away. He was going for the ball, and then the stop is made by Spencer Wagoner, number nine. Well, Jules got a little bit out of control here. Let's see what the call is. Two penalties against the Aggies. Do they have the option to uh, accept them both, or do they have to decline one? Or take the greatest denominator? We'll see what happens. Offside on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. Five yards, face mask. Penalty is accepted. First down. There we go. So that'll move the markers to the 45-yard line where the Raging Cajuns will take over. Just under four minutes of time it took for the Aggies to move across the field rather handily. 71 yards. That's got to make the offensive coordinator Jim Zorn feel happy. Delone back to pass. Looking across the flat for his for his running back, and he will find some room himself up the middle, uses that speed to get to the 41-yard line of the Aggies. Sean Coleman on the stop for Utah State. Well, the Aggies were in a coverage defense all the way. You could tell that because there was not much of a rush. The Aggies are going to try, uh, they tell me, as we watch him drop back, to, to try the pressure with just the four front linemen throwing in some blitzes here and there. But DeLone couldn't find anybody open, so he's sprinting right up the middle and a good gainer for the sophomore quarterback. Southwestern Louisiana brings their plays in through their receivers. Franco Smith, Darren Struther in the game. That's Cotton in the backfield. He takes it. A pickup of about a yard and a half to the 40-yard line. Good job that time by Matt Hawk, who's the other starting defensive tackle with Matt Balls. Hawk wears number 98. He just kind of pushed against the pressure and caved in the whole blocking wall. Also, you see uh, Johnny Williams there, who is figuring in on play as well. 
key again is to try to uh, stop this running game, and they came out this time on the first down and threw the ball, sensing that they're going to have a little trouble running the ball against Utah State. There's a look at Jake DeLome. 1,200 yards passing so far this year. With 12 interceptions. And that was his total last year. Yeah. For all of last year, it was 12 interceptions. He's back to pass again, rolling out to his right side. Looking and finds the intended receiver. That's Ron Thomas. Good for a first down, but also a flag. If the play stands, it will be at the 30-yard line. Let's see if we can decipher what the officials have seen. Personal foul against Utah State is what, is what the officials' early indication was. Coach Weatherby wants an explanation. Well, and they will take that all Play the way. Hit. Defense, 15 yards penalty, first down. That really hurts. One of the reasons uh, why you, this is a, this is one of those things that sportscasters think up when they have a little bit too much time on their hands. But Jake Delhomme. When they lose, or when they win, he has a bad game. Six for 14, you see his average there, 108 yards. When they, when they win, he has a rougher game. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those ironic twists. As you see the Ragin' Cajuns muscle over to about the 11-yard line. Brings up a second down play. Donald Toomer, Gary Brown on the stop for Utah State. They, they rely heavily on that running attack. Both um, Mossick and Cotton have to perform, and they do perform when they win. Well, right. When they run the ball well, they win the games. Here's a, the, the pitch to Mossick in this case, sweeping the left side. Uh, coming up, Donald Toomer is going to make a nice hit right there. Number 22 puts his head right into the play. When they run the ball, they're more successful. When they're forced to go with the loam, it doesn't work so well. Second down and six. Ball's on the 11-yard line inside that blue zone. And there are about four jerseys all over DeLome. A sack all the way to the 18-yard line. Johnny Williams got him first. This is one of those times where DeLome, who is known to make some bad decisions, he's made a few this year, did here. But, of course, the Aggies didn't give him much time to make any kind of decision. Johnny Williams is all over it. It seemed like the offensive line just kind of got down on one knee as four blue jerseys just stormed into the backfield. Ron Thomas and Donald Richard. He's the top receiver here for Southwestern Louisiana. They both come into the game with the play. And both Richard and Thomas are on the right side. Out of the shotgun. DeLome again pressure. Danilo Robinson forces the pass. It's over the intended. Intercepted. Intercepted. Charles McMillan on the two-yard line. The two wide receivers to the right side did a little crossing pattern about seven or eight yards down. And DeLome, I don't even think, saw him break off the pattern. He was so much under pressure and then threw it up for grabs and McMillan was there. Out of the shotgun again. Look at the pressure coming from right up the middle. He has no time at all. And then the toss toward the goal line is kind of floating up in the air. And McMillan getting out in front of the wideout Donald Richard and made a nice play. That's the 13th interception uh, of the year for, uh, for DeLome. Well, that's the good news. The bad news, the Yankees are on their own two-yard line, 98 yards in front of them. Again, Wells directs Greer to another spot as there seemed to be some confusion at the snap, and Wells just kind of moves into the middle of the field, a pickup of about a yard. Not sure exactly what happened there, but there was some confusion, and Matt Wells just wanted to get what he could out of it. Wasn't setting up for field goal position in the middle of the hash marks. <laughs> Second down nine. There's six minutes and three seconds left in the first period and counting. By the way, as Wells comes up to the line of scrimmage, he's six of seven throwing the ball. That's as good a start as he's had this year. Wells rolling to his right. Throws on the run and over the intended well, receiver. Yeah, good decision there because there was no opening and uh, you don't really want to be chased around in your end zone for a long time, so he got rid of the ball. Third down and nine. Matt Wells has thrown for 810 yards on this season. You see a look at his numbers tonight. That would uh, bring him to a total of 850 yards. Five touchdowns, five interceptions. He you know, actually, boys. Yeah. He, he and DeLome are uh, right close together in the quarterback ratings in the league. Uh, Wells is, is fairly solid because he doesn't throw the ball away so much. Doesn't throw it to the other team. Pro Greer, the lone setback. Sean Johnson, Kevin Alexander along the right side. 
Wells, three-step drop, fires over the receiver again. Going for Johnson again. And that'll bring up fourth down. So we'll get to, again, uh, test the medal of Nate Morreale as he will be close to the end line in the end zone. <laughs> Nate Morreale averages uh, just over 40 yards a punt. He's punted 53 times already. And we'll say if we've got tennis elbow, they might have punter's knee because he has been called on quite a bit there. He's had a long of 55 yards. <laughs> And back deep to receive for the Ragin' Cajuns is Damon Mason. Mason averages nearly six yards of return, and he will get excellent position to choose from, and he's just going to let it bounce. Looks like the Cajuns will take over on the Aggie 44-yard line. Excellent position. We will take a break with the score. Utah State 7, the Southwestern Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns 0. Five minutes, 40 seconds left in the first period. Ernst is taking 20% off everything in the store. Saturday and Sunday only, the Ernst's 20% off customer appreciation sale. Why? Ernst appreciates your business. So we're getting you 20% off everything. Wow, everything. It's an amazing sale on amazing merchandise, quality brand names, 20% off. 20% off. Don't thank us. Thank you. It's Ernst 20% off customer appreciation sale. Saturday and Sunday only at Ernst. You don't need to pump iron, just rely on this deal. The 195 horsepower Vortec V6 in the all-new GMC Jimmy. Doesn't everybody want a little more muscle? Now it's quite easy in the all-new GMC Jimmy. Its lower step in height makes it very easy to get into. Its leaf price helps out in that area as well. The Ragin' Cajuns have excellent field position. We're just under six minutes left in this first quarter. They've got the ball on the Aggie 44-yard line. They will take over first and 10 following the punt from Nate Morreale, 41-yarder. That sounds good, a 41-yarder, but look at the field position. They're in Aggie territory because of the turn of events with McMillan's interception. Kenyon Cotton in the backfield. He takes the fake, and <laughs> Richard is met behind the line. Boy, Johnny Williams wasn't fooled on the little reverse try. He was right there to make the stop, number 49 for the Aggies. Up there on your screen. Well, if that play works, it works well, because Kenyon Cotton has got to be a great blocker with the size he has, 251 pounds. And we mentioned earlier, he just doesn't go backward. When he falls, he falls forward and always seems to get a couple of yards out of it. He's their short yardage specialist, and so the plan was to get Richard to follow behind him. Johnny Williams, however, had already read that part of the script. A little bit of a change in the Aggie defense in that Lonnie Johnson is one of the down linemen now. He hasn't played a lot of football this year. Blown back to pass. Look right through the arms of Donald Richard. Richard's their leading receiver. 32 receptions on the year, but let that one slip by. Now again, they face a third and long, which is what Dick Bumpus and his defensive people want. Here's DeLome with uh, some time. He throws and uh, Richard can't hold on. And uh, Spencer Wagner, I think, is there just to make sure he's ripped to the ground in case he had the ball. <laughs> it is a little chilly out there, and the hands probably sting a little bit. But that's not football. Third down and 11. Balls at the 45-yard line. DeLome rolling out to his left. Throws across the field. Aiming for Richard again. Coverage there. But it was very nice by Utah State. I think that was Corey Alexander. Yeah. And so that brings up a fourth down, a punting situation for the Ragin' Cajuns. They've been given some nice field position, but have been thus far unable to do anything with that. Kevin Alexander back deep to punt. And the punter's Mike Jones. We've met him before, an average of just under 40 yards a kick. Snap is low, no pressure, however, and he's able to boot a beauty. Alexander will let it bounce, and it gets right to the one-yard line. About the two, they will mark it down. A beautiful punt for Jones. He has sent now 16 punts this year inside the 20, and that punt inside the two was beautiful. We will take a break. Four minutes, 38 seconds left in this first quarter. Utah State up, 7 to nothing.
Hot Rod Hundley here for Upper Limit Fitness Warehouse. When I bought my fitness equipment, I came to Upper Limit for the unbelievable warehouse prices and selection. Besides that, they're the fitness experts. Nobody knows fitness like these guys. And the equipment, you got to love it, baby. Come on in to Upper Limit at 815 West, 2400 South in Salt Lake, or 1345 South State in Orem, and see the exercise equipment experts. And remember, just like the Jazz, they're your coaches too. Southwest Airlines will not lose a fair war. We have low operating costs, so we can offer you low fares on a regular basis. It's not a gimmick. It's not a promotion with us. It's something that we believe in with all of our fiber. Every seat, every flight, everywhere we fly. Other airlines try to copy Southwest, but they're just facsimile of the real thing. Southwest is the low fare airline. If there's a fair war, they're going to get nuked. We're back in Logan, Utah, Carlton Wing here along with Craig Hislop. The Aggies again now inside their own five-yard line to try to start a drive. First and ten, ball is on the two-yard line. The defense has done what they have needed to thus far for, from the Utah State point of view. The Aggie offense has one very nice scoring drive. They're backed up against the wall again here. Matt Wells, first and ten. Sabu Wilson in the backfield, Ivy Russell in motion. Fake the pitch and give to Abu for a gain of about a yard, as if he even got that much. Abu curled around as they faked the pitch to him, and he just took the direct handoff from Wells. Went back up the middle of the field, but was unable to find any room. So this is exactly what happened. Uh, the last time the Yankees were down this deep, they started on the two. There was a little bit of a misdirection play, and they ended up one yard ahead, so it's second down and nine. Abu Wilson still in the backfield. Up at the top of your screen, that's Sean Turner. Sean Johnson in motion. Pitch back to Abu this time. He's got a little bit of room. Squeezes ahead for a gain of about three yards. Orlando Thomas with a tackle for the Cajuns. Thomas, the, the guy that made the stop again, we talked about his blitzing antics, and he also led the country in interceptions uh, last year is a big safety at about 6'2", 215 pounds. Charlie Weatherby said he'll be the top safety drafted uh, in the NFL uh, this year. Ball is at the six-yard line. Third down, yet another third down attempt. Here for the Aggies to try to keep this drive alive and try to get the positioning of this field a little bit more toward the north side. Matt Wells calls timeout. Abu Wilson jumped over to another position, and that seemed to confuse them. A little bit so with third down and six yards remaining the timeout they'll talk it over well up to now the Aggies have thrown for 40 yards on uh, six of nine and uh, run for 20 so their 60 yard total compares to the uh, 29 for USL and really the difference is the the first drive of the game by Utah State uh, over 70 yards it took eight plays you remember the pass the corner that started it right off and then the 14-yard uh, pass from Wells to Turner, and then the uh, pass interference call uh, got the Aggies close, and Greer went on in on the nice block by Sean Johnson, and it's 7-0 as we're coming down the end of the first quarter. That has to be kind of a ray of hope, because the Utah State Aggies last year were the 15th-ranked offense in the country. They averaged 422 yards a game, 442 yards a game. This year, you stick a zero in between the one and the five, it's 105th-ranked total offense in the country, 224 yards they average it's nice to see a 71 yard drive yeah. well and what's changed the coaches haven't changed Jim Zorn's still calling the plays the players have changed the offensive lines basically totally new you've got a young quarterback who's learning I think this is the best start to a game I've seen Wells have uh, this year he's he's doing well making some good decisions it's been a continuation of what the coaches said they saw last week at Louisiana Tech they were very impressed across the board uh, with this Aggie offense Ivy Russell again in motion, third down, six, big play. Abu Wilson up the middle, he finds room, gets the first down, and more met by a host of raging Cajuns, but not until Abu is able to get to the 21-yard line for a first down for Utah State. Boy, that makes a big difference, doesn't it, from the six to the 21? That's a 15-yard run for Abu. Let's look at it again. Almost like a draw look, but really wasn't, but he got the blocking right up the middle. Out to the 21-yard line. Nice run by... Abu Wilson, who's probably every once in a while has in the back of his mind that, that knee injury of a year ago. And Aggie fans will have in the back of their minds 
the Utah State freshman rushing record that he set was nearly 800 yards a couple of years ago. Pass is incomplete. Britt Jackson with coverage for USL. Second down and 10 now. Clock has stopped with two minutes, 49 seconds in the first period. There's a look at Britt. So starting uh, the nickelback. This is Wells rolling to his right with Abu in front of him for protection. Threw it a little bit behind Sean, and that uh, gave uh, Jackson, the DB, a chance to get a hand on it and deflect it away. Kevin Alexander and Ivy Russell are at the top of your screen. Abu Wilson still in the backfield for the Aggies. Wells changing some things at the line of scrimmage. Wells looks and fires just a little bit behind Sean Turner. He had to come back for that pass, was only able to get a hand on it while his momentum was carrying his body the other direction. Third down and 10 now. Looks for the most part like, like uh, USL is holding true to form, a very aggressive defense. Somebody's always blitzing from either a defensive back or linebacker spot, and uh, that's why Wells has got uh, at the front of his mind uh, getting rid of the ball as quickly as he can. Or also to get the ball to the outside, as uh, we've seen uh, Abu in a couple of sweeps, and Greer scored on a play like that, too. Matt Wells, big third down, changes things again at the line of scrimmage. Abu Wilson moves, and then comes in motion to the right side. Matt Wells met, and met quickly, of number 21, John Harris. Wells had nowhere to go. That's John Harris's second sack this year. He's a converted linebacker playing strong safety right now. And that gets the Aggies right back to where they were, which is a very poor position to punt from. Now here's Harris on the blitz, totally unblocked, coming from the strong safety position. Just one of those times. And up to now, you've got to admit that the Aggies have done a good job picking those up. But they didn't on that one, and it forces an end to a, the drive after the great run by Abu. Nate Morreale about two steps away from the end line there. Had a 41-yarder, but it still put the Cajuns well inside Aggie territory. This is another punt. Damon, Damon Mason gets it all the way to about the 40, the 37-yard line. I'll credit him with a 34-yard punt, a big floater, but boy, the game of field position is, is going against the Aggies. And remember, it all started when USL was knocking on the door. McMillan made the interception, but we played the rest of the game. Uh, and that was, uh, that interception happened with about six and a half minutes left for the entire six or seven minutes it's been played at this end of the field. South end of the field, the fans in there on the south side are getting the close-up view of this game. Seven to nothing, Utah State, one minute, 57 seconds left in this first period. Donald Richard in motion. And wiggling away and unable to find any room as David Gill and Tyrone Trimble are in on the tackle. That's Marcus Pryor out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's averaging just over 40 yards a game for the Raging Cajuns. You see he has to adjust at the line of the scrimmage as the holes are filled up. You know, I mentioned a little earlier that um, we're seeing Lonnie Johnson of the defensive tackle. The guy we featured at the top of the show, David Balls, is not out there right now. Could be that they're going with a couple of second unit guys in the interior. Well, there's Pryor again. The ball is loose. And that, I believe that's David Gill with the recovery for Utah State. David Gill was right there when the ball popped loose. There he is. Might and there's been, another big turnover. Might have been Trimble that knocked it loose. Number 18 for Utah State. If we get a chance to look at a replay, let's see what happens. Look for number 18 coming in there somewhere. Yeah, the diving tackle, and he knocked the ball loose. Nice play by Trimble. It's loose, and it's Gill that gets on it. And now the Aggies have the first decent field position they've had since they had the first drive to score. Well, I'm sure that's just exactly how they planned it was to get that big sack, take him down to the five, get the punt off, and then go for the turnover. Minute 13 left in the first quarter. Ivy Russell in motion for the Aggies. Matt Wells gives to Abu Wilson, works his way ahead, brings a tackler with him to the first down marker. Patrice Alexander was doing his best to hang on to Abu. Abu's a little fired up. The official kindly tells him to get back into the huddle. Abu was uh, saying this week that he, he could tell a big difference in the blocking at Louisiana Tech in the sludge bowl. He said the offensive line was doing a job, and obviously they must be, or he wouldn't be running like this. That's a nice run. Not even his longest of the night, but boy, he looks good running the ball right now. First down, ball's at the 45-yard line. Kendrick Huey 
is in the game for the Aggies. He's the backup flanker behind Sean Turner. Kevin Alexander, Kendrick Huey, and Sean Johnson are the receivers along the left side. To give it to Abu Wilson again up the middle. He works his way through traffic. He's able to get away from tacklers. He's got two men to beat. He gets dragging more tacklers all the way down to the 23-yard line. Big play. John Harris finally gets the stop for the Raging Cajun, but not until the Aggies come up with one of the bigger plays of the evening. 33-yard run by Abu, and here he is taking off. A couple of blocks, uh, actually, not clips from behind, but uh, little bumps. And Abu, boy, a nice run, and he continues to drag a defender with him. That was a great play. Abu is running as well as we have seen him. Time is ticking away here on the first quarter. About eight seconds left. We'll probably get one more play off. And we do. Profel Greer up the middle, tries to work some of his magic. Knee goes down on about the 21-yard line, a pickup of about one and a half. Derek McKinley, the closest Cajun to him. And that is the end of the first quarter. Utah State has drawn first blood, scoring first. Seven to nothing is our score. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. Introducing Oldies 94.1. One, two, three, two. Utah's great oldies are on. Oldies 94.1. Come out around the world. Oldies 94.1. For all oldies all the time, listen to Oldies 94.1. When it comes to health care, ask your employer about Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the company of choice. We have a surprise for you at Blacker Furniture. We've joined our family with the RCA family. RCA has a new 18-inch satellite dish that's sweeping the country. We have them here, along with a full line of RCA color TVs, VCRs, and camcorders. Another busy area in our store is our carpet and vinyl department. We have one of the largest selections in northern Utah and a great team of professional installers. For all of your floor covering needs and electronics, visit Blacker Furniture. We're still the home of the soft sale. Hi, I'm Steve Brown. On our next Jazz Journal, John Stockton hits one of the world's hot spots and gets a taste of military life. Jeff Hornacek has his own version of summer camp, and it's a family affair. How's camp going? Pretty good. Yeah, you learning stuff? And Sean Bradley returns to Utah making his first professional appearance. All that and more, Sunday night at 10.30 on Jazz Journal. We're back at the beginning of the second quarter here, and I know that it, uh, you seem sometimes the viewer at home can seem deluged with uh, numbers, but it's our job. When Utah State scores first, they have won 12 out of 16 games. In Charlie Weatherby's uh, tenure? Yes. When the opponent scores first, they're 2 of 11, so they are glad to get on the board first. Pass complete to Kevin Alexander. Has nowhere to go. A pickup of about four yards. Tim Sensley on the tackle for the Cajuns. Got about four yards on that play. Take a look at that again. Here's the uh, catch by Kevin. He's trying to figure out where to go. There is nowhere to go as Dwayne Williams was downfield to block. Earlier in the drive, uh, the 32-yard run by Abu Wilson turns out to be the longest run of the year. Previously, it was a scramble by Matt Wells that got the Aggies 27 yards. Third down and five yards to go. Aggies inside the red zone. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Goes in motion to the right side. That's Orlando Thomas coming in with the blitz. Wells able to get it away to Ivy Russell. And he's got open field ahead of him. Touchdown, Utah State. Matt Wells to Ivy Russell for Russell's first touchdown this year. And I really think, of course we don't know, but I really think Wells made the play by seeing the blitz and getting rid of that ball quick. So the preparation continues to look very good. They, they told us they had an audible package they thought would work against this aggressive defensive team, and he picked uh, Russell up out in the uh, flat right now, and that's uh, a second touchdown for the Aggies already. Mike Anor on for the extra point. 
Aggies looking to jump ahead 14 to nothing, and they do. Just inside the second quarter, the Aggies are now up 14 to nothing. And we will take a break as the teams do as well. You're watching Utah State football on KJAS 14. Utah skiers save at Park City Ski Area. Whatever kind of skiing you're in the mood for, you'll find more of it at Park City, Utah's largest ski area. Season passes and Utah resident coupon books are now on sale for a limited time. And both are guaranteed with our $8 million snowmaking system. The sooner you act, the more you save. Park City Ski Area, the heart of American skiing. Hi, Rod Hundley here for Upper Limit Fitness Warehouse. When I bought my fitness equipment, I came to Upper Limit for the unbelievable warehouse prices and selection. Besides that, they're the fitness experts. Nobody knows fitness like these guys. And the equipment, you got to love it, baby. Come on in to Upper Limit at 815 West 2400 South in Salt Lake or 1345 South State in Orem and see the exercise equipment experts. And remember, just like the Jazz, they're your coaches too. The Aggies are responding gracefully so far to the aggressive defensive style of southwestern Louisiana. They lead it 14 to nothing here in the early going at Romney Stadium. If the Aggies keep up the pace, uh, they had over 100 yards in the first quarter. If they got a 400-yard game against this defense, it'd be one of the worst games southwest Louisiana has played because they're one of the top 20 teams in the country defensively, and they don't even average giving up 300 yards a game. The Aggies are pretty much having their way on offense right now. That kick was out of bounds, so the penalty will ensue, and so the Aggies will re-kick it five yards back. Or, no, that's right, the Southwestern Louisiana will take it at the 35-yard line. That, that is one of the options. That seems to work well in most cases. 14 minutes, 10 seconds left here in this first half. There's the scoring drive. Russell on the 19-yard reception from Wells just took a couple of minutes after... The fumble recovered by Gill caused by Trimble. First and 10 balls at the 35-yard line. Out of the eye formation now. We've got Cotton and Mossick in that order. Fake pitch up to Cotton in the middle. Bobbles around a little bit, but he gets all the way. Just might be about six inches shy of the first down. Donald Toomer, Sean Coleman in on the stop. We'll see where they mark it. Watch Cotton as, uh, as Johnny Williams got a hand on the ball. Cotton was almost lost it and was able to fall forward. That's that weight that Cotton has. He's just a 251-pound muscle falling forward, and it's kind of hard to push him back. I was going to say it was the longest run of the night for them, that nine-yarder, but they had a 14-yarder earlier. This is Mossick. Mossick finds some room across midfield. Johnny Williams with a tackle, and there, there's a fumble. Spencer Wagner has come up with the ball. And Utah State recovers. Another turnover here that gives the Aggies the ball in great position. Let's see what we can see what happens. Johnny Williams on the stop. Oh, that I think was, he was down. That was he had already hit the ground. That's not a good call, but uh, the Aggies will take it anyway. Take a look at that again. Johnny Williams there with the stop, and he is clearly on the ground. That's Mossick on the ground, clearly. However, ball pops loose. Aggies have it. Coach Weatherby won't complain. Well, and I was looking down at Nelson Stokely, the USL coach, and he didn't complain either. So let's go on with the game. Oh, Matt Wells drops back, fires up the middle. He's going deep for Kevin Alexander. Out of bounds. Well, I think they just wanted to score quickly before anybody changed their mind. Going deep for Kevin Alexander. He's been the big play man this year. Well, you saw that graphic, three turnovers, McMillan's interview, the recovery by Gill, and now the recovery by Wagoner. And that's what stopped Southwestern Louisiana last year at this time. They had six interceptions last year. Stopped them last week against Southern Miss, too. Same thing. And they drove the ball well last week and then couldn't put it across. Matt Wells put it together. It's quite a nice game so far. 
Second down and 10 to give to Profel Greer. He's got some room, utilizes some of his agility, gets to the 42-yard line, two yards shy of the first down. Tim Sensley with a tackle for the Cajuns. Funny, funny thing about that play is here's Greer running and somebody actually smaller than him in front of him trying to block. We're talking about uh, 17, Sean Johnson, who did a fairly decent job. And remember when Greer scored on the uh, that pitch sweep in the first quarter, it was Sean Johnson that threw the key block. Who said little guys can't play football? <laughs> Sean Johnson is 5'6", 178 pounds. Profil Greer is 5'8", 185 pounds. Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues in the backfield. Third down, two yards to go. That's Ivy Russell in motion. Give to Greer in the backfield. He's got to out elude some of the tacklers there to get back to the original line of scrimmage, which he does. But he is shy of the first down. Casey Brabham with a tackle for USL. <laughs> One of those... Uh, plays where uh, it, he could actually count it as one of his better runs and all he did was get back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and the Aggies are looking like they're going to go for it. The punting unit has not come out onto the field and now they do. And the crowd was sensing some of the excitement. They wanted them to go for it. So now both teams switch very quickly. There's Nate Morreale. Damon Mason back deep for USL. Morreale gets off a nice punt. Mason calls for the fair catch, lets it bounce. The Aggies could down it. Unable to do so, it bounced around. Well, Donald Toomer did his best. He almost kept it in play. He was basically the first guy down there. It would have been on about the one foot line, which would have given USL a taste of their own medicine. The Aggies have spent a lot of time in the south end zone trying to get out of it, but USL takes over first and 10 on the 20-yard line. So we're early in the second quarter. Uh, Aggies have a two-touchdown lead on the strength of the run by Greer and the catch of the pass from Wells by Ivy Russell. Jake DeLome hands off up the middle. That's Mossick, and the ball looked like it popped loose again. Dave Ball's in on the stop, a gain of about two yards. Here's a look at Dave Balls out of Ogden, Utah, Bonneville High School, two-time All-State as a defensive end. And he has made his 30th consecutive start for the Aggies. But not always as a down lineman. He's played a little outside linebacker. They've moved him in and out uh, quite a bit until the last year or two. Second down and eight. Mossick gets the pitch around the left side. It's about another yard and a half. The run brought down Paul Gustafson. Gustafson looked to be on some kind of a blitz move and was in the backfield fairly quickly and made a nice play on that one. Ten minutes, 56 seconds left in the first half and counting. Third down and six. We mentioned before the Yankee defense, number one in the Big West Conference as far as holding opponents on third down possibilities. And now... Southwestern Louisiana has called timeout, and so will we. With 10 minutes, 41 seconds left in the first half, Utah State up 14 to 0. We'll be back right after this. Now that cold weather set in, come into Intermountain Farmers for warmer work clothing. Because if your job keeps you outside during the winter months, you know dressing properly can be critical. So whether your outdoor activities are for work or fun, come see our stylish new jackets and workable insulated coveralls. Designed to be convenient to put on as well as comfortable to work in. Cold weather apparel you need at a price you can afford. We're serving your needs at home and on the farm. We're IFA. Ernst is taking 20% off everything in the store. Saturday and Sunday only. The Ernst 20% off customer appreciation sale. Why? Because Ernst appreciates your business. So we're getting you 20% off everything. Wow, everything. It's an amazing sale on amazing merchandise, quality brand names, 20% off. 20% off. Don't thank us. Thank you. It's Ernst 20% off customer appreciation sale. Saturday and Sunday only at Ernst. We're back in Logan, Utah. Carlson Wing here along with Craig Hislop. Aggies have much to cheer about. Up on the board, 14 to 0. So far, the defense has pitched a shutout. They've got an opportunity to stop yet another Raging Cajun drive. The Cajuns are back in the shotgun formation, facing third and six with the ball on the 24-yard line. DeLome looking, firing 
deep, just heaves it up there. He's got an open tight end, Romero, who catches it at the 41-yard line. Spencer Wagner with coverage. Somehow, Romero was able to amble down the field and find an opening. What happened was uh, Wagner mistimed his jump. We might see this on the replay. He was there in coverage, but the bigger tight end really didn't have to make a huge play. Watch Wagner here, and you'll see him jump and come down, and then the catch is made right there. Another look at it. Well, that's uh, from further upfield. And now Wagner comes into the picture. He had the right idea, but it was thrown high, and he couldn't get to it. Kenyon Cotton, the lone step back in the backfield. He takes the handoff up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles. He's got an open field ahead of him. Gets all the way to the 19-yard line. Spencer Wagner again on the stop there. But now, suddenly, two plays down the road. USL is at the 19-yard line inside the Aggie Blue Zone. Here's the handoff powering right at us. Look at this big 250-pound fullback. Toomer finally fought off a blocker to help make the stop along with Wagoner, and that's a 22-yard run, and it brings their total up to uh, 63 yards on the ground. Back into the I formation. That's Cotton and Pryor in the backfield. Cotton takes it again on about the same play, and he's got a touchdown. Southwestern Louisiana. <laughs> Kenyon Cotton ran the same play again. Off the left side. Not much uh, deception to this. They kind of fake the pitch, and then he just powers right up the middle from 19 yards out. In the first five drives, the Aggies did a good job defending the run, and now uh, with two plays, they push toward 100 yards rushing. And in fact, uh, 41 yards, the last two carries running the ball after the ground game had been pretty much this ground to a halt. Mike Schaefer on for the extra point. And he puts it right up the middle. The USL gets on the board, cuts the lead in half, 14 to 7. Kenyon Cotton, we talk about his power, and I've already mentioned that he's 251 pounds. He's a sophomore, but uh, he's also got speed to go with that power. 4 6 40 he runs, and he was able to show some of that on the last two plays that really put the, uh, the raging Cajuns. Here's a, a look at it from ground level as you know, home just turns and uh, hands it off to the big guy, and there's nobody going to get him. He's into the end zone for their first score. USL has had a nice turnaround the last couple of years. Two years ago, they were 2-9. And, nine. and uh, what some people would say, thanks in large part to Utah State, they became 8-3 and three last year when Utah State, as we mentioned before, knocked off the first two quarterbacks in game number one and gave them Jake DeLome. There's a look at the scoring drive. 80 yards, five plays. Of course, the big two at the very end when Kenyon Cotton ambled in. Kind of interesting that all of their success has coincided uh, directly with uh, Nelson Stokely giving up his job as athletic director and concentrating just on his job as the football coach. He's a former um, Louisiana State player, was an assistant coach, uh, had a lot to do with Clemson's success a few years ago as one of the coordinators and, and now has taken over at uh, USL and uh, talked about his season last year in a co-championship with Utah State. Preseason number one, he has, and he was also the returning coach of the year from 1993. A very, very short kick taken at the 23-yard line. And that's the tight end, Hamilton, who ends up catching the short kick. He gets to about the 37-yard line. There's a flag on the play, however. Big Mike Hamilton. Looked like he was caught a little by surprise with that kick as was the rest of us. Was that bad English? Did I conjugate that incorrectly? Well, it weren't too, <laughs> it weren't too good. <laughs> Illegal block oh boy. in the back by the receiving team during the run back. First down. That's Jack Gatto, one of the uh, veterans of college officiating, a Big West official, obviously. Puts the Aggies back into familiar territory on the 16-yard line where they'll start their drive. Nine minutes, 44 seconds remain in this first half. Right in the middle of your screen, you're going to see what went wrong right there. Well, you saw me point at it, but I guess uh, you didn't know where I was pointing. It was Tyrone. Yeah, Tribble was in on that play. There's Abu Wilson cutting up field. He is running with power 
receiver tonight. He gets to the 25-yard line, a pickup of nine, Patrice Alexander. But Abu Wilson, every time he runs the ball, he's dragging a defender with him for those last couple of yards. And still now, we've seen a couple of games that we've telecast before, and uh, the, the holes weren't there in earlier games like they are tonight. So let's not forget to give some credit to Jared Tuioni and uh, Robert Holmes and all the other guys up front that are that are doing a job griswold and the whole crew you can ask any runner it takes a couple of steps to get that speed and when you don't get those two steps that's what happens abu wilson falls forward for about a yard looks like he will have enough for the first down though but when the offensive line provides that provides that initial hole the runners are able to then utilize that speed get the agility going and get some momentum abu wilson has been able to do that thus far in the evening that run about a one yarder will give him 71 yards on seven carries you see it right there my math is correct that's just over 10 yards a carry isn't that Craig well, that's me. <laughs> oh Matt Wills goes down and the ball is loose and we'll see what the officials say as to who has it the Cajuns say they do and they do at the 12 yard line a big fumble there as Matt Wells was brought down behind the line Jeff Mitchell providing the pressure looks like Joe Bailey recovered the fumble as well let's take a look at it there you see the ball rolling behind two Cajun jerseys right there ball is at the 18 yard line the Raging Cajuns are now set up to tie this game. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. Out of the eye formation again to give to Pryor. And Pryor muscles his way for a gain of about four. It was Trimble that made the initial hit and uh, slowed him down. A couple of other Aggies came along. Uh, Pryor there, 34. Again, we mentioned this earlier. In the estimation of Dick Bumpus, could be their best talent. He uh, has less than 300 yards coming into the game, but... On the videos that Bumpus has seen this year, he liked him as much or more than Mossick and Cotton. Again, out of the eye, Cotton and Pryor. Malone, second down, gives to Pryor again. Pryor doesn't have that much room this time, and he's forced back for a loss of about a yard. David Gill providing the stop for Utah State. It didn't look like anybody on the Aggie front was beaten that time. Everybody took care of their own assignment, and that opens it up for any linebacker, or in that case, well, Gill and then Scow there, number 40, and also Wagoner coming over to make the stop because all the down linemen take care of the initial wave of blockers, and that opens it up for those linebackers and secondary people. So they're pretty well stuffed up there. David Gill leads the team in tackles. Another third down play, third down and six. Richard in motion. Delone rolls out to his right side. Looking, David Gill providing pressure. He will sack him at the 26-yard line. Well, if nothing else, that makes for a 42-yard field goal attempt as fourth down is now upon us. Here's Delone on the run. Pressure from Trimble on the outside, but he gets past that, but not past Gill who draws a beat on him and whips him right to the turf in front of the Aggie bench, and that forces, instead of a touchdown try, they got to go for the field goal. And this will be a 42-yard attempt. Mike Schaefer, he is perfect. This would set a school record if he makes it for the most consecutive field goals. And he does. Ten consecutive field goals for Mike Schaefer, this 42-yard attempt. As southwestern Louisiana now, 14 to 10. We will take a break. Six minutes, 34 seconds left in this first half. The Aggies ahead, 14 to 10. Nationally famous, the AT&T Traveling Technology Truck is on display exclusively at RC Willie. Also exclusively at RC Willie, this AT&T 486SX250 desktop computer, 4 meg of RAM plus fax modem with voicemail, software, 6 online services, and color monitor, $9.99 after factory rebates. AT&T multimedia computers with monitors start as low as $12.99 after rebates. The sales at all stores, but the AT&T Technology Semi will be at the Syracuse store this Friday and Saturday. Nobody beats RC Willie. Nobody. Page Break, Salt Lake City, Bernal, and St. George are brake and alignment specialists with complete parts and service for all vehicles from person movers to earth movers. 
Great Brake keeps trucks and trailers rolling safely with complete brake service. Pace Brake keeps commuters commuting safely with properly maintained brake systems. Tourist touring, recreation rides operating with safe braking systems. Page Brake, complete brake service in Salt Lake City, Vernal, and St. George. Call Page Brake to cure your brake problem, large or small. We service them all. We're back in Logan, Utah. Mike Schaefer's kick there not only it puts him 10 for 10 on the year, we mentioned it sets a school record. He had achieved 9 for 9 twice now, and this time he was able to convert. And he is one of only three place kickers in the country now that is perfect on their field goal attempts. Of course, with qualifying numbers there. There's the kick. Taken at the 7, Kevin Alexander. Profile Greer providing a nice block to give Alexander some running room. Alexander gets all the way to the 38-yard line. There's a flag up on the other side of the field. I was watching uh, this side where Mike Hamilton was throwing a great block, but I think we've got to have a call against Utah State. Here's Alexander looking for the blockers. And now he gets to the sideline, and Hamilton there, number six, throws a block. But uh, somebody coming from the other side finally brought him down, but they're going to bring it back. Uh, Alexander has shown some nice agility on his uh, kick returns, averaging just over 24 yards a return. Had that nice 82-yarder earlier in the season against Colorado State. Five receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Alexander is fourth in the league in uh, returns, 19th in the nation coming into this game. Well, that kick will come back all the way to the 12-yard line where the Aggies will take over. Six minutes, 27 seconds left in the first half. Aggies would like to use that clock well, drive all the way down, and put a score on the board before they go in for intermission. And the Ragin' Cajun defense would like to stop them. It looked like a little bit of movement on the left side of the Aggie offensive line, well, that would be Kevin Corner. Yeah, and also the uh, down linemen for USL were pointing at big number 77, Jared Tuioni. Not indicting him or anything, I'm just telling you that's who they were pointing at. <laughs> Again, the only time we seem to mention those guys is when something goes wrong. Although they have been blocking well for the Aggies. Defense, five yards. Oh, no. really bad call. First down. Matt Wells was able to argue successfully that Jeff Mitchell. Look in the upper right corner if you can see some movement. Whoops. There's uh, oh, the Kevin the Corner. Aggie tight end moving. And also here comes a USL player into the screen at the top of the picture as well. Now the Aggies are really in need of a first down. Big play. The Aggies get the benefit. And so now it's first down in five yards. The give to Profel Greer. Greer motors ahead. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Gets to about the 21-yard line. Rafael took the handoff, and he was waiting for uh, 65, Sean Griswold, to go one way or the other, ready to go off the block. Sean just kept pushing his man straight back, and uh, Rafael ran right up his rear end for a gain of a yard or two. Inside of six minutes left in the first half. Aggies less than a yard away from first down territory. Rafael, the lone setback. Wells rolls out to his right side, looks, fires, and almost found Kevin Alexander, but he almost found Orlando Thomas and Britt Jackson as well. Well, it isn't often we see Thomas back in coverage like that. Orlando leads this team in tackles with 72. He has two interceptions on the year. Let's take a look at that play again, how it develops. Funny that Alexander actually went out of bounds and came back in to try to catch it. That's a no-no. Third down. Third down. One yard to go. Profell again. A single setback. All three receivers along the right side. Profell gets it, and he will not get the first down. A loss of about a yard on that play. As the Ragin' Cajuns celebrate a defensive stand that will force the Aggies again to punt or at least put them in a punting situation. About a yard and a half away from the first down. And the punting unit does come on. That'll be Nate Morreale. He has been called on several times already tonight. Aggies hanging on to a four-point lead here in the first half as we've got five minutes, 15 seconds left and ticking. Back deep again is Damon Mason for the Ragin' Cajuns. Morreale gets it off. Mason takes it at his own 47, finds a little room, and 
Jordan gets into Aggie territory, so knocked down at the 48-yard line of Utah State. Xavier Foreman providing that last hit that kind of pushed Mason backwards. Not a long punt, about a 33-yarder. Here's Mason coming up on it and deciding to return it. The Aggie coverage was pretty good, though, and there's the stop right there by Foreman. USL's been in Utah State's uh, end of the field quite a bit tonight for only having seven po or ten points. Out of the eye formation again. That's Cotton and Mossick. The fake to both. Stallone rolls out to his left side, fires, and incomplete to the intended receiver, Ron Thomas. Thomas would have had the ball at about the 31-yard line. Well, he threw it where he had to. Otherwise, the coverage by uh, Todd Townsend could have been a problem. Let's look at the play again. The receiver does have an uh, outside position. And you can see it led him just a little bit. A catchable ball, it looked like, though. Had a step on the coverage. Brings up second down and 10. Clock is at 4.52. High formation again. We've been doing that a lot here in the second quarter. Cotton and Mossick. That's Richard in motion going to the right side. And the give is to Mossick. Eludes Tyrone Trimble. Eludes Travis Scow. He's got first down yardage and more. Gets all the way to the 22-yard line. Todd Townsend finally brings down Steve Mossick. Well, the fact that you uh, called it that way with the uh, Trimble and Scow way upfield and, and in position to make the tackle and not doing it tells me that we had some defensive backs uh, on the move toward the uh, quarterback, and that must have opened something to the outside, and Mossick took advantage of it. That was a nice run. Mossick has good speed. 26-yarder. Adding to his total, he has three touchdowns on the year. First down and 10, balls at the 22-yard line. Again, the give to Mossick, this time around the left side. Mossick, stiff arm, Spencer Wagner gets all the way, an eight-yard gain back to the 14-yard line before Eddie Davis finally forces him out of bounds. Looks like about a half a yard shy of the first down mark. That's Mossick, who coming into the game was their leading rusher, almost 500 yards in seven games. Second down. They're saying it's a two-yard margin for the first down. The give up the middle falls forward close to where the first down mark is. This will probably have to be measured as it gets to the 12-yard line, which is right about where the first down marker is. Johnny Williams, David Gill on the stop. Johnny Williams, the senior defensive player of the year at Western Los Angeles College. The first uh, three or four series, an average run for them would be something like three... Four, one, minus one, four, and now look at them. 26, 8, 19, 22 in the last half dozen runs. The Aggies had, had really controlled the running game, and now that's really turning. We would seen the Raging Cajuns have found some kind of a weak link to exploit. Well, about by about three inches, that is a first down. First down and 10. Ball is at the 12-yard line. The clock is at four minutes and two seconds left in this first half. The Ragin' Cajuns could take a lead with a touchdown here. And a field goal would get them within one point. Jake DeLome back in the huddle as the clock starts ticking again. Single setback. That is Kenyon Cotton. Pryor is out as a receiver. The give is to Cotton up the middle. Cotton falls forward as he usually does to about the 10-yard line. Dave Balls with the stop, pickup of about two yards. I mentioned earlier that in addition to a big fullback, Cotton there, watch balls come right off the block, and also Daniela Robinson, the ball's 91, is right there, and they collaborate to bring the a big load fullback down. He's, he's huge, but I was going to say they've got an offensive line that's bigger. Keno Hill, 302. Sam Heinen, 300. Out of the eye, the pitch back to Pryor, looking for room around the right side. Get to inside the five-yard line, about to the four. Tackled by Travis Scow, number 40 for Utah State. Pryor at about 5'7", right there, less than 200 pounds. is a really a nice change-up to the, the big bowling cotton and... Uh, Maybe caught the Aggies a little bit off guard that time with the run down to the four. Greg Hamilton will enter the screen here shortly with the play. Number 22 is a freshman. 
Hasn't seen much playing time. But Jake DeLone calls timeout. They do want to put points on the board, and they want to make sure they've got all their ducks in a row, so to speak. Two minutes, 29 seconds left in the first half as the Rage and Cajuns take timeout. It's interesting how this game has gone. The Aggies set the tone right away with a 72-yard drive with the uh, passes to Corner and Turner, and then the pass interference call against U USL. Then Greer's run, and the Aggies led 7-0, and then USL made three big mistakes. The Aggies cashed in on the second one with an 18-yard pass to Russell, and it was 14-0. And at that point, Carlton, it seems that's when the game started to change, and and uh, the Ragin' Cajuns figured out how to run the ball against Utah State, and Cotton, on one drive that led to their first touchdown, had uh, two runs back-to-back -back of 42 yards. One of them was a, a, a scoring run, and that made it 14-7. Later, they drove to a field goal, and it's 14-10, and they could take the lead if they play it right here now. And it's, it's really changed because they figured out how to run the ball against Utah State. And the Aggie defense has tested the medal of Jake DeLone. He's the sophomore who the Ragin' Cajuns are very happy to have on board. Well, we're ready now. Third down, three yards to go. Three backs, one trips. Jake DeLome has no one to pitch it to, and Dave Balls drags him down. Touchdown. Touchdown, southwestern Louisiana. I thought for a second that Johnny Williams, number 49, and had wrapped him up at about the four, and in fact, it looked like DeLome was so convinced he was wrapped up he might pitch the ball let's see what happens here as Williams is coming down the line he grabs him there DeLome looks and decides what the heck I'll keep going and just falls into the end zone he pulls a Kenyon Cotton on that play and and scores to give them a lead well and when Jake DeLome turned to look his runner which I believe was Marcus Pryor had tripped right at the beginning of the play and there was no one to pitch it back to looked back saw nothing thought I better take it myself he did scored and the Ragin' Cajuns now with the addition of the extra point have taken a three-point lead here before a stunned crowd at Romney Stadium. Two minutes, 24 seconds left in the half. 14 to 17, the Aggies are down. Don't want to see that Aggie nighttime jinx come into effect here again. One of the greatest things that's happened here was the, uh, the establishment of the lights. And supposedly that makes it possible for more people to get to the game, and the Aggies have played four interesting football games. Last year, Baylor and Reno, you remember. And this year, UNLV and Utah, close games, but all losses. Trying to turn that trend. All worth the money there for the fans <laughs> that are uh, paying for the attendance. Last year's homecoming game was that Nevada-Reno game, which went down to 36 seconds left in the game when Reno was able to plunge in for the winning touchdown. Take a look at that uh, scoring drive, and you see that southwestern Louisiana has found something that seems to work in that playbook. Motored them down the field on a pair of drives here, and now they hold a three-point lead. And well, the Yankees will have two minutes and 24 seconds yeah. to try to get on the board. And basically, they've almost doubled the Aggies in rushing. They've got 123 yards on the ground, and I'd say the last eight or nine rushes, they're averaging seven, eight yards a carry to get up to 123 yards. And the first downs are about even. The Aggies have nine, and USL seven. USL tries that short kick again. Again, it goes to Hamilton. This time, he seems to maybe know a little bit what to do with it. Doesn't get out quite as far, though, to the 25-yard line is where his forward progress takes him. The ball is loose, but we're not sure if it's down or not. There's a mad scramble and a lot of white jerseys. Hamilton got spun around a little bit, and oftentimes that spins the ball out of the hands, but it is Utah State ball. They will take over on the 25-yard line, first and 10, two minutes and 15 seconds left in the half. Let's see if we can see the ball pop loose. There is the ball. It was loose. Whoa. It was a live ball. I'm not sure how USL did not come up with that. There were about four white jerseys compared to one blue one. Matt Wells, the two minute and 15 second drill here at the end of the first half. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Sean Turner up at the top. The fake to Abu, Matt Wells, Matt by a very hungry Jeff Mitchell came in unscathed and Matt Wells goes down at the 13 yard line Jeff Mitchell with his third sack of the year no one there to block him let's see if we can see what happens he'll come onto the screen quickly as see Matt the, Wells can attest that's two times also that know, Matt Wells could have easily fumbled the ball the play action did not fool Mitchell at all and actually what it does is forces Wells to take more time before he sets up and when you turn around and see a big red 48 in your face, you don't have too many options. 
Well, the ball is placed at the 15-yard line, brings up second and 20. A 10-yard loss on that sack. The pitch back to Abu Wilson, cuts across traffic, and gets to the 23. A gain of about eight yards, Orlando Thomas with the tackle. A minute 21 and counting. Nobody is taking time out. It's third down and about 11 yards to go. There's Abu on the end of the run. And he has accounted for the greater bulk of the Aggies rushing game, which is now at uh, 76 yards. Officially, probably when you figure in Wells sacks, all the plus yardage on the ground probably belongs to Wilson. Third down and 11. The Aggies seem to be content to possibly run this. Well, there's some movement on the line. We saw that. Looks like Jared Tuioni. Number 77, the 285 pound junior. Took off a little early and got a hit. It did stop the clock, however, 47 seconds. There's the entire left side of the line. Dyson was doing a little twist inside, and Tuioni was black blocking to the outside. Off it end. looked good, except. Five yard penalty. Third down. They went a little too soon. They'll make it third and 16. I want to remind you that Rob Howell will be at the KJS Studios in Salt Lake to bring you up to date with all of the events going on today. Former Utah State wide receiver. Yes, sir. A letterman. Got some exciting action from uh, some area teams. Utah, big, big game today. Abu Wilson around the left side. Doesn't have much room. Gets to about the 20-yard line. Patrice Alexander with the stop. And now there is a timeout. Southwestern Louisiana has called because they want to have some time to do something with this ball. It is now fourth down. 26 seconds left. That is the final timeout, if I heard the official correctly. So it is fourth down, 15 yards. The Aggies will punt. And uh, USL will have uh, a couple of plays to be able to try to get back at least into field goal position. They've got a hot kicker. Mike Schaefer, 10 for 10. Every field goal from here on out consecutively adds to his new record. As he made a 42-yarder a little bit earlier in the game. Damon Mason back, standing on his own 44-yard line to receive the punt. Nate Morreale, a busy foot this evening. He's standing on his seven-yard line. He has punted several times from inside his own 10. Gets the punt away cleanly. Mason takes it on his 47. Met immediately by Johnny Williams. There is a flag on the play. It's usually in the area of illegal block. Holding, clipping. See what the official has to say. Well, nine seconds uh, ticked off the clock, so there are now 17 seconds left. And when we see what the penalty is, they're moving it back against Southwest. Illegal Louisiana. block in the back during the, during the receiving team. Run back. 10-yard penalty. First down. It sounds like it's cold out there. <laughs> well, it was cold uh, several minutes before the game when we were on the field, and that was quite a while ago. The sun has gone down, you know. And they're wearing short sleeve shirts. <laughs> I wonder if that was his idea. 17 seconds left. And the Ragin' Cajuns will put the knee down. A little bit of extracurricular activity there. Eddie, Eddie Williams decided to take a little extra hit. Eddie Davis, excuse me. Well, the clock has ticked away. It is the end of the first half. And the score, Utah State 14, Southwestern Louisiana's Ragin' Cajuns 17. It's a three-point deficit at halftime. We'll send you back to the studios at KJAS. For Rob Howell's update right after this. Kimball Roofing, roof repair specialist. Call 484-9040 in Salt Lake, also in Ogden and Provo. Kimball Roofing offers complete general inspection to pinpoint your problem or potential problem and recommend the most cost-effective solution. Kimball Roofing can repair leaking vents and damaged roofs, even replace troublesome flat gravel roofs with the latest one-ply modified membrane material. All work is guaranteed and maintenance programs are available that can double the life of your roof. Cover your lifetime investment with a quality Kimball roof. Call 484-9040 in Salt Lake City, also in Ogden and Provo. And so do you. One with a solid steel 
frame and side door guard beam. The all-new GMC Jimmy. Isn't it time you...